So I've had a lot of requests from people that say they want to hear my testimony, which if you're not familiar with that language, that's just like church language for tell us how you became a Christian. And that's kind of interesting to me because this whole video commentary thing is still kind of new and experimental for me. And so I haven't fully defined what the the target audience is or what the themes are going to be. But I did have this idea that it was going to be about ideas and topics and not so much about me. But with these requests and the insistence from some other people that I know that have been saying, you need to get more personal with these, I've decided to... to to, to give that a shot. And especially my wife, for example, she keeps saying, you need to get more personal. And she's probably the, maybe the fourth, even the third smartest person I know. So I thought we'd give it a shot. Before we get into it, I, I wanted to take the time to point out that these videos are usually a little more scripted and polished than this. And that's because, again, they're usually about ideas, and so I come up with arguments and I write them out and I, and I get really acquainted with uh, the content of that. But if I'm going to get a little more personal, then I felt it was appropriate that I be more candid and communicate with you more in the fashion that is just me rather than scripted lines. So this one's going to be pretty experimental and different from what most of my videos usually are. And I would love to hear from you if you like this format better or if you like the other format better or if you don't notice the difference at all. So please consider sharing those comments, uh, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube or wherever, and just let me know what you think of this format and if you think we should uh, keep moving forward with this style. I think it's fairly safe to characterize myself growing up as being someone who was hypercritical and judgmental and pretty cynical. And I, there's probably a lot of reasons for that. One of them is that I, I thought that gullibility was a really unattractive quality. And maybe that comes from some sort of an experience where someone took me for a ride and then I felt like I looked like a fool after the fact. So I just treated everything really, really critically and skeptically. And, and I felt like that was better than giving people the benefit of the doubt and, and risk uh, looking like a fool. This quality of being really judgmental and cynical extended to the adults that were in my life. So the people that were in charge of mentoring me and turning me into a functional citizen, I would look at their lives and I felt like they just seemed very unhappy and very unfulfilled themselves. This was true of the religious people that I had encountered in my life as well. It seemed like whatever it was that they called faith was just a facade that they put on in the morning like an accessory. So as I surveyed the landscape of my superiors, I struggled to accept that this was the program that I was going to be adopted into. I, I couldn't reconcile that with this very deep, almost superstitious belief that there was more to life than what I saw around me in the adults in my life. Now again, this is all a very judgmental attitude, and I'm not trying to justify it or say that this was like a virtue or anything like that, but it's where I was at as a teenager especially, but as an adolescent broadly speaking. Over the course of my adolescence, I had met maybe a handful of people that I thought were, were truly convicted religious or Christian people, people that really seemed like they had a relationship with God and that that meant something to them, that they had internalized it. And it wasn't just something that they would put on and take off in order to fit into their cultural or institutional surroundings. Now, these few people seemed to be the most happy, joyful, peaceful, and self-confident people that I had ever known. It was either that or a really good act. And I wasn't really sure which one it was, but their lives just seemed to reflect that, that deep sense of purpose that I suspected was there, but I didn't see reflected in the lives of the people around me. In spite of the qualities that I admired in them, and even those qualities that I wanted for myself, I was still attracted to something else more, which was the desire to be cool and to fit in. And no matter how normal or even attractive some of these people were, I still got the sense that people were going to be making fun of them behind their backs. And so as long as I prioritized being cool, I felt like I can't, I can't go in that direction. So the desire to be cool and fit in won out between those, those two competing desires. And that continued to motivate me in my life until I met someone who changed my life. So by this time, I had graduated high school and I was coming face to face with my own lack of direction and purpose in my life. I was 
taking the year off and telling anybody that I could that I was going to go to college as soon as uh, as soon as I could but I wasn't really making any big strides in, in making that happen. Right around that time my girlfriend at the time had started to attend a Bible study that was hosted by the mother of a mutual friend of ours which was really interesting to me because I didn't even know that this mutual friend of ours was religious but nonetheless I did not want to go to a Bible study at all. Um, but my girlfriend at the time she she called all the shots in this relationship and so she told me that we're going to the Bible study and of course I had to just fall in line and do what she said. So I ended up going and I met the mother of this mutual friend of ours and I don't want to embarrass her or, or implicate her in, in case she sees this. So for the sake of the story uh, I'm not going to use her real name I'm just going to call her Mary. So you have to understand that I had a very cynical view of domestic life. My own family had split up and even the families of friends that had stayed together didn't seem like they were doing very well. And so this idea of a happy wholesome family, the kind that you would see in 80s sitcoms, was almost insulting to me because I just didn't think it existed and I didn't see it anywhere in my life or the lives of people around me. That isn't to say that I had a miserable family life or that my mom and dad were bad parents or anything like that. Like they loved us a lot and worked really hard to take care of us but in spite of their best efforts they weren't able to stay together and that created for me a very destructive view of family life. So when I first attended this Bible study I was dumbstruck by what appeared to be a happy, healthy, wholesome family life. I literally didn't know what to make of it and it almost seemed fake to me. This woman Mary had this peace and serenity and self-confidence that I couldn't help but think was authentic and as an adult she took interest in me in a way that I hadn't experienced before. It wasn't in a in a contrived or a pandering way the way that I had usually experienced with adults but she seemed genuinely and sincerely interested in who I was and what I had to say. The more I got to know her and the more we attended this Bible study the more I became attracted to whatever it was that gave her this sense of peace and joy and it became obvious to me that it was her faith in God. So as time went on I found myself confronted by a desire to want to become more like the person I saw in her. But I knew that faith and a relationship with God was what came along with that and all of the anxiety and shame that I had come to understand was intrinsic to religion but at the same time she didn't have any of that anxiety or shame and in fact she was again one of the most peaceful and self-confident people I'd ever met. Logically I didn't have any big obstacles to the idea of God. I was aware that there were arguments against the existence of God and I was aware that there were arguments for the existence of God but considering the scope of what we were wrestling with here, this idea of a person or a thing being behind everything that exists, I felt like logic alone, human logic, the, the, the capacity that human beings have to resolve that question just wasn't enough. In my mind I felt like I had to seek to encounter the God of Christianity since that's what Christianity says you have to do. The Bible says knock and the door will be open for you. So one night after the Bible study I came home and sat down by myself and prayed and not one of the kind of prayers that I had prayed in the past where if I was having a bad day I would just launch some desperate appeal out into the universe and hope that some benevolent being would take care of my issues. This was one of the prayer, this was a kind of prayer that was more of an invitation to God to come and have a personal encounter with me. What happened next is really hard to describe and in fact it's something where I feel like my ability to communicate completely fails. I was overwhelmed with peace and at the same time emotions that I had never experienced before and truth, goodness and beauty just washed over me. In that moment I realized that everything had changed. My perception of the world and the relationships I had were all going to be different now and I could not go back to the life I had been living before. So at that point I considered myself a theist and I committed myself to following God as best as I understood what that meant and since I had been introduced to God in the Christian context that was the direction, the most obvious path uh, that I, I felt like I could travel down and so I, I did 
And what came next was a bit of church shopping and this need to confront this, this kind of buffet of denominations that, that uh, all seemed separated and had their own claims of truth. And for me, a, a desire to just want to learn about this new religion that I was trying to adopt, but at the same time, not getting a clear sense of, of where that direction should come from. Thank you guys for watching that. If you enjoyed that, then please like it and share it and subscribe and come follow along for more content. And if you want to support the making of these videos, then please consider supporting the business that makes them possible. Holdsworth Design is a digital marketing and communication company that specializes in web design, print design, branding, videography, and all that kind of stuff. So, and this is with a special emphasis on churches and ministries as well. So if you know somebody that needs those services, then please consider passing that along to them and check out the website, which is www.holdsworthdesign.com.